Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about PPIs or proton pump inhibitors, which are acid reflux. They're not just for acid reflux, but that's what's in the thumbnail. They're basically medications that reduce the amount of acid that's being made by your stomach, but they're used in other purposes, which I'll get into as well. There's been a lot of controversy and a lot of scary things on the internet that people have been reading about, and I get asked about this in clinic all the time, even though this isn't really my main area. But as a gastroenterologist, inevitably, I'm going to be asked about some of these PPIs. So let's talk about this. Let's get into it. So I'll be talking about what these PPIs are, how they work, whether one's better than the other, and all the controversies about whether or not they can be harmful. So I'll get to all of that eventually. So just keep watching and we'll get there. So before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the red subscribe button below. First and foremost, let's talk about what are PPIs. These are medications that first came out in the 80s, in the late 80s, but they're not just used to treat acid reflux. They're also used to treat ulcer disease, they're used to treat as part of the regimen to treat the bacteria H. pylori that can live in your stomach and cause ulcers and cause gastric cancer and it's also used for inflammation of the esophagus from a reflux and for some people even prevent long-term development of esophageal cancer if they have chronic changes from too much acid reflux. There's even a syndrome out there where too much of the hormone gastrin is stimulating the stomach to make acid so this medication is definitely necessary for conditions like that. We also use this medication when patients show up bleeding from their stomach or if we're suspecting bleeding from their stomach or their esophagus, we will put them on PPI medication in an IV form. So it's used to treat GI bleeding as well. There are multiple different brands and a lot of these brands are actually over the counter, which is what the thumbnail shows. I went into Target and I grabbed a bunch of these and they were all from different brands and it just goes to show how there are so many different brands and yeah. this is not an endorsement of any specific brand we just use all of them there is some variation um, for the different types of proton pump inhibitor medications as to what you can use them for but in general they all work the same way employing some sort of similar mechanism so that's why they fall into the same category and all end in the same suffix so if you look at the generic name not the brand name the generic name all end with prazole P-R-A-Z-O-L-E. Whether it's omeprazole, cantoprazole, isomeprazole. There's other ones that I'm probably leaving out, but they all end with prazole. One key thing to keep in mind right off the bat is that these medications are different from histamine blockers, H2 blockers, which you might hear your doctor saying. These are medications like Pepsid or Zantac, which are in a different category of medications that act a different way altogether. PPIs are also different from Tums and Rolates and other sorts of antacids that purely serve to sort of neutralize the stomach acid rather than reduce the actual production of acid by your stomach. So that brings us to how do these PPIs work? So really the medications, contrary to popular opinion, are actually absorbed in your small intestine. Once it's absorbed into your intestine through the bloodstream, it'll make its way to the cells of the lining of your stomach and block off that part of the cell that travels to the surface of the cell to actually push the acid out. So you need to take this medication about half an hour before you eat and you definitely have to eat because when you eat, that's when you're cell are actually signaled to secrete acid so that's when the medication can actually work. So the PPIs work longer than the H2 blockers or the antacids. So the effect tends to be maintained over time and the general thought is that these are the most effective because this is really blocking off that very last step of all the pathways when it comes to actual secreting the acid. So now comes the question, is any brand any better than the other? And the answer is probably not. There have been so many studies studying this and there's no really great consensus. Some studies sort of say that there's a one that's better than the other, but the dosing is off when you look at the study. Also the different studies out there are for different conditions. Some of them are for acid reflux, some of them are for ulcers, so it's really hard to compare. Just like anything else, the things that actually get published tend to be positive studies that show that things work 
The things that show that things don't work don't usually get published, so we don't really know whether there are negative studies that aren't being published. And in case you're wondering, this is called publication bias. Now finally, problems with proton pump inhibitors. So there have been reports out there about proton pump inhibitors causing C. diff-related diarrhea, causing dementia, causing kidney disease, causing osteoporosis and bone fractures, causing magnesium and B12 deficiency, causing pneumonia. So I would say that the general consensus among the professional GI community is that yes, long-term use of PPI may increase your risk of developing C. diff-related diarrhea or osteoporosis. I don't think that there's any way that anyone can say that they can't happen 100%, um, but they might increase your risk for some of these conditions. Certain conditions that have gotten a lot of media attention, like dementia and kidney disease, some of those studies are still very controversial and kind of faulty. You're drawing associations rather than actually establishing a cause, like, like the PPI caused the disease. We don't know that just because you sampled a population that when you pick out the people who took PPIs versus those who didn't and found that there were higher rates of dementia, that there was an actual mechanism to explain that. So I think it's kind of hard for us to justify you know, how PPIs can potentially cause dementia or how PPIs can potentially cause kidney disease. That simply needs more science. When we think about C. diff diarrhea, maybe PPIs altering the acid in your stomach might be affecting your gut microbiome or the fact that we can't absorb certain nutrients to maintain um, bone health over time is also impacted by how much acid your stomach makes. Some of those explanations have scientific basis, whereas others are just vague and we're still trying to figure it out. So again, there's a lot of debate about this. Some of these studies may not have been accurate. Some of these studies might not actually show a clear explanation for why things are happening. The bottom line is you have to weigh the risks versus the benefits. Weigh the risks versus the benefits. So some people would really benefit staying on these medications. If you have an ulcer that is not healing, or if you have those chronic changes in your esophagus that are precancerous, you probably would benefit from being on a PPI long term and really reducing the risk of serious complications or cancer from happening than something that is sort of not yet well established. But in other conditions for short-term use, yes, I think getting off of the medication and weaning off of it is a great idea. But the bottom line is speak to your doctor because you may or may not know whether or not you benefit from long-term use. Everyone's situation varies. Just speak to your doctor. They'll give you a better assessment of whether or not this is the right thing for you. And maybe they'll discover that you don't need to be on it and they'll take you off of the PPI. So in other situations, it might actually be necessary, so don't just go ahead and stop your PPI without asking your doctor first. So that's it for today. Thank you for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. You can follow me on all my social channels at AustinChangMD and check out my website, AustinChang.com. Until next time, please stay healthy. I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.